This is how I made an MMO in 48 hours. Any great game starts with a great theme, so I had to think of mine. It had to be something charismatic, something everyone loved and could relate to. Cows? No, I can't draw legs. Snakes? That's been done before. Squirrels? Too jittery. Crows? Been there, done that. And then it hit me. What is something simplistic, sweet, aromatic, and beloved by men, women, and children? Fruit. So here's the plan. I'm going to create a very simple game where players compete to become the largest fruit. They do this by drinking juice to grow and avoiding spikes laid around the area. But get too close and pop. They spill all their juice for others to consume. As for the framework, I'll be using Angular for the front end UI and running a node server on the back end. But wait you say, and comment below, Angular isn't for making games. You know what else isn't for making games? The TI-84. But being a massively multiplayer online game, most of the actual game itself, or the interactions between players coexisting in the same virtual room, will be handled on the server level, and then the resulting movement and collisions will be distributed to each player connected to the room. Starting the timer, I began with the Angular base framework, and then I broke it down to something I could work with, a blank screen. The game itself will be rendered for the player on an HTML5 canvas element and redrawn at 60 frames per second, even though the server won't be communicating that fast with each user. For anyone following along and using Angular for their own project, remember that for a timer to properly work in the current context of the class, you have to bind this to whatever function is being called, otherwise your variables won't be updated properly. For the first few hours, I worked out the basics of displaying fruit. I began with four classics to get me started. The banana, mango, kiwi, and mangosteen. And after dusting off my trigonometry, I was able to get a hitbox to rotate along with it. The movement of the fruit is handled not with a keyboard, but with a mouse, or if you're on mobile, a touch. But I didn't want to write too much game logic here on the client side, because most of it is going to be run on the server. So I opened another folder and built a new server for the project. And this is where a lot of things started to get a little chaotic. But first, a word on how I connected the user to the server. For fast live networking, WebSockets are fast and powerful. A WebSocket is a bi-directional communication link, as opposed to HTTP, which only goes in one direction. This means the user can both send and receive data from the server, or rather what will happen is all users can asynchronously send data to the server, and the server can reply with regularly timed updates. These communications aren't limited to documents or strings, but contain JSON object data, so I can just send fruit objects from the server to be used directly by the client, without having to spend time interpreting the data. I've built this kind of WebSocket server over a dozen times at this point, so it's fairly easy for me to set up. I wait for the first player to connect, then create a room for them. This room can be filled with other players who connect, and upon connecting, all fruit and environment data will be sent to them to begin client-side rendering. But since it's only my self-testing for now and I haven't set up any environment, it's just empty. But as you can see here, two players can connect and get into the same room. Here, I only send the initial data, but to display all players' movements to each other, the server should send the updated locations often and to every connected player in the room. But the clients don't need to talk with a server that often. They only need to communicate back with the server when they input any movement from the user. After sending that data, everything will then be calculated by the server and updated for all users. Movement and physics is the next thing I'm going to write, but here's a very rough look at one banana dancing around another on a solid green sheet at around hour 8. For the next few hours, I was focused on getting movement and collision set up. I smoothed out the movement and setup of the hitbox for each fruit to be a set of vector coordinates centered around the fruits X and Y. It turns out, though, the math behind 2D polygon collision is quite complex. So complex that the first library I tried to use, sat.js, only worked with convex polygons. That is, polygons whose interior angles are all less than 180 degrees. So it was incompatible with my convex fruit-shaped hitboxes. Eventually, I found another library called Detect Collisions that was able to handle convex polygon collisions. As a bonus, this also came with a nice visualization feature that helped with debugging when things weren't colliding as expected. And eventually, after a few hours of looking at the same few lines of code, everything was working out alright. While collision still wasn't perfect and hitboxes do need to be retuned a bit, it was good enough to move on and add some environmental elements. Namely, spikes, which serve as both the border and hazards of the stage, and juice, which causes the fruit to grow. 
During normal gameplay, players will run around the stage drinking juice to become the biggest in the room, and avoiding spikes which cause them to pop and spill their juice. Theoretically, there would be no cap on how large a player could get, because inevitably they would grow into a spike and pop. But before I added in popping, I did get a banana to grow this big. After around 20 hours into this project, I produced a rough model, but as always things are going slower than planned. During this phase, I changed the background to pink to give it a more tropical and less mahjong table feel. I also finally figured out the solution to a question I've had for a while. How to produce a random one or negative one without an if statement. Although this solution does still require the creation of a temporary variable. If you have a better solution without the temporary variable, I'd love to see it in the comments down below. But problems began to appear in the physics engine I had written. Player speed broke down after the player doubled in size, and collision just didn't feel quite right. So I stared at some graphs and determined an appropriate speed curve, so that the fruit goes slower as they grow while also increasing the force necessary to push them along as well. I also rewrote the calculation for adding force to the fruit from being acceleration based to momentum based, and abandoned the adding of a negative friction force for a simple exponential decrease of velocity instead. All these changes in the physics gave it a smoother, icier, bumper cars like feel, which is exactly what I think it should feel like. I want players to be constantly running into each other. And now, it was time to focus on AI. I don't think that fruit is going to be a viral success story, so I need to have some other non-user players to fill out the room. But even if every player is an actual user, if they leave the room while still on the field, I'll need an AI to take over and keep things going without missing a heartbeat. Ideally, I would have liked to have built some kind of neural network that learned how to play the game on its own and would actually be good competition for the users. However, I didn't think I could train one up in the remaining time I had left, so I had to settle for the cheaper option, a handwritten AI. Like the ghosts in Pac-Man, this AI has several different modes, chasing the player, gathering juice, and when the room gets too crowded and there needs to be less people, the AI takes themselves out. It didn't take long to write the foundations of the AI, but I continued to tweak it here and there and try to smooth out the rough edges for several hours, trying to get them to last longer than 30 seconds in the room. But in the end, it was still a lot more A than I. At this point, gameplay is basically finished, so I began to work on the user interface, using Angular to create a dynamic overlay for the game. Since growth is the most important aspect of the game, it was fitting to install a top 10 leaderboard where users can see their rank with each other. Here you can see I had set all names initially to their unique fruit ID, and then later to TMP because I still had to create the second part of the UI, which is where clients insert their username, select a color for their name on the board, and choose which fruit they want to play as. I tried to keep colors light and tropical while also customizing the buttons to feel more like the user is pressing down on them. And then I did my best to have the selection screen feel intuitive to use, and eventually wound up with this design here. At this point, I'm in at less than 35 hours, and I still have a whole list of features to add and things to refine. The minimap, which I added at some point earlier, is still a little strange. AI need proper usernames, and I need to add the unlockable fruits, each with their own artwork and custom hitboxes, not to mention a way that players can unlock these new fruits. Redesigning the minimap was easy enough, I went from squares to circles and quite literally smoothed the edges out on everything, and it looks a lot better. AI also have usernames which can consist of a prefix, proper name, and suffix, or just a random set of English, Greek, Cyrillic, or Japanese letters. So if you see one of these names in the room, know that it's an AI or someone disguised as an AI. Player names are now also displayed over each player's head, and the user size is displayed at the bottom right of the screen. I then designed 5 more fruits that could be unlocked by the player. The strawberry, orange, lemon, square watermelon, and dragon fruit. It took a few more hours to perfect these fruit designs, but setting up the relevant date in the system was rather quick. I just added them to the master list array of fruit, and then set up the outline for each of the fruit's hitboxes. I went through the same process for the visualization of the monetary system. Coins and yanba, or what in English they call a saisi. The user earns coins based on how large they grow in the previous round they played. Coins accumulate over time and are saved locally so they are persistent between sessions. A few of my games from years ago saved local variables as cookies, but I found this method to be clunky and unreliable. With HTML5 there is a more secure and reliable solution. 
web storage. Using the window.localStorage command, data can be saved as strings and then retrieved later when the user opens the web page once again. Both coins and fruit are stored this way, so if the user buys the strawberry to unlock it, it is always unlocked. At this point, I would like to hit the buzzer for time, but I still have to get this thing online. It wouldn't be much of an MMO just sitting in the archive of my computer. Just like how any MMO needs a good theme, it also needs a great domain. Unfortunately, fruit.com, or any variation of it, is not a valid domain name, no exclamation marks allowed, so I needed another charismatic name, but someone took my first idea, lemonbananakiwi.com. That isn't a joke, someone literally owns this domain. As well as banana.com, banana banana.com, banana banana banana.com, banana 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 banana.com, banana 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 banana.com, and fortune cookie banana lemon.com. So I went with my next best domain name, fruit.tokyo. But that was taken too, so I had to go with fruit.yokohama. For server hosting of both the Angular project and Node server, I'm using Heroku, which provides a lot of free server uptime and allows custom domains for projects. Heroku has always been very reliable for all my projects, and server waking has gotten much faster over the years, and I would highly recommend them. And with the final update made to Heroku, Fruit is officially launched, an MMO made from scratch in less than 40 hours. So now you, the viewer, can become you, the user, by going to fruit.yokohama and playing for yourself. Desktop and mobile controls both support it. Depending on how popular fruit is, I may go back and add more fruit and design a better AI than what I currently have in place. If you have any fruits you want added to the game, let me know down below and I'll see what I can do. And until next time, thanks for watching.